we have with us uh, virtually our chief guest of the day, no one else but uh, Sheikh Hazrat Taki Usmani Saab, who I always feel and I really feel that he is an institution within himself. So please give a very warm welcome to the chief guest of the day, Hazrat Taki Usmani Saab. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin Khatam al-Nabiyyin Wa Imam al-Mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi al-Ma'in Wa ala kulli man tabi'ahum bi ahsan ila yuhuddin Amma ba'd Respected participants of this August Forum, I firstly congratulate and express my heartiest gratitude to IPA Institute of Business Administration and see that is Center for Excellence in Islamic Finance. To hold this August conference on the subject of development of Islamic finance for global prosperity. This type of conference has been held before and I was honored to attend this conference more than once. And I feel that this conference is attended not only by the stakeholders of Islamic finance in Pakistan, but also from different countries of the of the world. Being a citizen of Pakistan, I welcome them to be our best in Pakistan and I hope that this conference will be fruitful for the cause of Islamic finance not only in Pakistan, it's on, not only in Pakistan, but also to the world at large. The subject of this conference is the development of Islamic finance for growth, global prosperity. And I hope that different speakers and scholars will be able to find out the ways and road map to achieve, to achieve this blessed goal of development of Islamic finance throughout the world. I am extremely I still be regret that I was not able to attend this conference physically and speaking to you through Zoom system. And I want to not go to the in, not, not to go into the details of the subject which I hope will be taken by the speakers and the scholars present here in this forum. I'll point out only, only two, po two points that need our consideration. First point is 
and it is widely admitted and accepted by different scholars of economy and finance that the financial system prevailing today is faulty and needs reforms it has not is had not succeeded to cater for the need of the society for the needs of humanity at large we have seen that because of this system the economic the economies of the world very frequently have shocks and because of these shocks the whole the whole economy is sometimes shattered as happened in the crisis of 2008 therefore everybody who thinks over the betterment of the society betterment of the humanity feels that this system needs to be reformed on a sustainable basis but unfortunately the basic cause of this faulty system has very seldom recognized by the scholars of economy and sometimes they suggest the solutions that are akin to some patchwork without changing the system and eradicating the basic cause of these faults that we face in our economy throughout the world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this universe we all agree that this universe was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we all agree that he is the most high and the message given by him is full of wisdom and the the precepts suggested or or ordered by him are the only solution for the difficulties faced by humanity at large but unfortunately the bird has not yet not yet accepted the basic that, that the basic cause of the faults in our economic system and in our, in our finance system the basic cause of evil is the riba which is often translated as interest it is riba or interest that has been prohibited in all divine systems divine books like torah injil and finally in the quran the jews the christians and the muslims all agree that usury was prohibited by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from very beginning and it it has been taken as is as the most able practice in commercial transactions the bible still has clear cut instructions about the prohibition of riba 
and the Holy Quran has explicit directions about the prohibition of riba and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has announced the total prohibition of riba at the time of his Hajjatul Wada but unfortunately when the present financial system was developed and it was felt that the prohibition of interest is an impediment in their way there emerged some scholars or some philosophers who wanted to redefine riba and it was according to my limited knowledge it was john colvin the first person who tried to redefine riba was john colvin the leader of the protestant movement he divided the usury or interpreted that the usury is something else than the interest commercial interest practiced in commercial transactions this was the first step to avoid the prohibition of riba on and dot that basis the banks and the financial institutions were established and then the fractional reserve system came in which brought the paper currency instead of gold and silver and after that the allowance of riba or interest made the wealthiest people to create another creature that is created by fractional reserve system and that is the bank created money and within no time it was seen by all that even the paper currency is a very small and tiny has a small and tiny proportion vis-a-vis -vis the total money supply of the world it turned all the economic system into a bubble rather i would say into a balloon that is pumped in by different products that have no real economic value at all it has turned the whole economy of the world in a balloon which can be burst at any time and it did burst many times in our economic history according to my limited study and knowledge the reform of the economic system or our financial system for the prosperity of uh, of the globe or global prosperity can this dream cannot come true without abolishing interest from our financial system i have explained this idea in a number of my writing and it was confirmed and ratified by many scholars of the day that the riba is the basic evil that had spoiled the whole system of finance in our society throughout the world therefore the abolishing riba system is not the need of a an islamic state only it is the need of humanity 
it is the need of the whole world at large and i will i will uh, request the participant of this august forum that they discuss and study this aspect of our financial system if we really want that islamic finance serves humanity for the global prosperity it is a, a very fortunately very fortunately this august conference is being held at an occasion when our federal short short, short uh, federal sharia court of pakistan has given a historic judgment about the ban of sharia on riba based transactions some uh, 35 years ago this judgment was originally given by the federal court said federal court federal sharia court itself which was appealed before the sharia sharia appellate bench of pakistan says the bench of the supreme court of pakistan of which i happen to be a member and then the sharia appellate bench of supreme court of pakistan gave a detailed judgment consisting of around 1100 pages in which the judgment has discussed different aspects of the of riba and interest after that this uh, judgment was reviewed by another bench of the supreme of the sharia tabel bench of supreme court and the case was remanded back to federal sharia court for fresh thinking on the issues involved now after 20 years federal sharia court of pakistan has delivered this recent judgment in which he has totally banned the interest transactions or riba based transaction in the country and has ordered that within the next 5 years the whole financial system should be brought in conformity with the precept of the holy quran and sunnah of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so now it is the high time to think and develop a road map to achieve this goal as ordered by the federal sharia court says court so i think it is uh, imperative for the for all of us and for the, the persons involved in islamic finance that they make the road map make a road map to ban the financial finance uh, the riba from our financial system and i would request the participants of this august forum that they will come out with some resolutions or with their suggestions to achieve the total prohibition of interest from at least from our country and we should develop a system that can be an example for others because as i believe the prohibition of riba is not peculiar to the muslims themselves only the prohibition of riba is a must not only for muslims but for the humanity at large if they really want or wish that 
the globe must prosper and the distribution of wealth should be should be on equitable basis to all segments of the society throughout the world therefore i welcome all of you and and request all of you to give more attention to the practical aspect of the prohibition of riba and to give us in pakistan how to convert our different our financial system into a riba free financial system it will be a great uh, contribution from this forum for our country for pakistan for our country and also for all the countries of the world and i thank you very much for your patient hearing assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh